In 2007, the animated TMNT release with a notable voice cast and enough story lineage to appeal to fans of the original films. It failed to kickstart a new movie franchise, but that doesn't mean there's no turtle power to be found. Welcome everyone to the Collector's Cut. I am Peter and joining me as always is David. I must have hit my head pretty hard. I'm seeing giant turtles. This is a movie podcast. We work our way through franchises and director filmographies and maybe subgenres, things like disaster movie season, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. We are interrupting the current Christopher Nolan season to dip back into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, earlier on in the year, we did all of the live action Turtles movies, but of course, there's a new animated film coming out uh, next week. So we are here to do to today to talk about the 2007 CGI animated uh, TMNT, which is actually the title of this one. They, they, they try to sound cool. They thought, oh no, we'll make yep. it snappier and an acronym. I, those, those are I in. Just, those are hip. I just really cannot imagine the whiplash the audience is getting from Oppenheimer. <laughs> to tmnt well because of the obviously the order of we recording this we don't know mm-hmm. what we think of oppenheimer yet but i suspect it's going to be a more intense film than this uh animated uh family oh, yeah. film so that's that's reasonable yeah unless no one's about to surprise me uh which is entirely possible but uh yes so let's let's go in 2007 uh this was uh this was actually something i was thinking about as i was watching it is that it's mm-hmm. actually a bigger time gap from when this came out to now which is 16 years than the gap between turtles 3 and this which yes. makes me feel ancient i'm not gonna yeah. lie uh because i remember when this came out it felt like oh turtles have been gone for ages and this is their comeback you know that's that's how it felt you know and mm-hmm. i was 18 when this came out so yeah time is flying um so the basic gist of this one is that it's you know, it's the turtles. It's kind of loosely set after the live action movies. You know, there's nothing too specific, but it does kind of feel like it fits. Other than the fact that April's had a bit of a career change, but other than that, it, it's yeah. pretty much you know the films happened. This is where they are now. Uh, they're in New York still, of course. Uh, we have a new villain plot which involves something happening thousands of years ago and something. We'll get into all that in spoilers, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean. Ultimately, there's there's conflict between Leonardo and Raphael. There's villains to fight, uh, and we got a lot of surprisingly stacked list of famous voices uh, in the voice yeah. cast for this, which we'll you know we'll talk about now, I suppose. Um, so up first, um, we mm-hmm. have Patrick Stewart as Winters, who's this business dude. Who I don't know it's a spoiler to say that he's tied into the whole uh villain plot because it's very clear right from the get-go that yes <laughs> what the massive capitalist is a villain who would have thought <laughs> um so yeah patrick stewart's in there casey mm-hmm. jones is chris evans and this is a chris evans who is fresh off the fantastic four movies but has not yet yeah uh, been cast as captain america so that puts us in a bit of a specific time period april neil is the star of the hit television show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sarah Michelle Gellar, is doing the voice of April. We've been through like 30-something episodes. Is that the first time on <laughs> this show? That. I, I don't remember it being elsewhere. Joe, you know, it says something that when... I, it says something that I do it more with the others because I know it tortures them when mm. I make that reference. And mm. I just assume you don't care. Well, see, it's it's how I know you don't watch any of the videos I edit on the comics channel because I always cut them out and you've never found out. You're a scumbag, quite frankly. I am. You're an absolute <laughs> scumbag. So yeah, you got Sarah Michelle Gellar, and then on top of that, uh, Karai, who's like the 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 woman now running the the, the Foot Clan because uh, mm-hmm. you know Shredder's not around anymore. Uh, she's played by Zia Zhang, who, you know, she was in Hero, uh, House of Flying Daggers, a bun- bunch of great, you know, Chinese movies. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, I think this was the first time I heard her speaking English in a movie, because I'd only seen her in foreign films before. So, uh, she was, I mean, if you're talking about the first time that you watched this movie, but she was also apparently in Godzilla King of the Monsters. So, that was I, much, she probably... That, that was much later. It was, but I'm saying, like, if you're talking about the first time you watched yes, it. Yes, obviously, that's what, that's what I'm talking up. about, All yes. Right. Sorry, sorry. I Fair knew enough. who she was at the time. I'd seen Hero, I'd seen House See, of Flying I, Daggers. I didn't, that's what I'm saying. I am, <laughs> this is, that would have been the first time I had heard her, period, but I was completely unaware of her existence before that. 
I was a man of culture even at a young age, okay? See, I wasn't because I went to the theaters to watch Turtles movies. Well, so did I, but I, I, you know, yeah. he'd be versatile. <laughs> Uh, also, the opening narrator uh, is Lawrence Fishburne, just randomly. <laughs> that that threw me for a loop, man. Because he never like, shows I, up in the movie as a character. No, he's just a narrator. He, I, I kept waiting for it, too. I was like, I picked out his voice. I was like, wait a minute, I know that. That's Lawrence Fishburne. And then I kept waiting for his character to show up, and it <laughs> never did. Yeah, so you know, it was that. Kevin Smith's got a small role. And then the other notable mm-hmm. one, actually, is uh, the Turtles themselves. Raphael actually has a semi-notable name attached to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, before, in fact, this was the same year as the first Uncharted, but I didn't know who it was yet. And oh, that yeah. is Nolan North, who voices Nathan Drake in the Uncharted games. And he's done other voices in other, lots of other video games and animated projects. But uh, obviously, he's a name that sticks out now um, because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm a fan of his other work. Um, so I was going to say, the, the, there's about 15 or so additional voices credits but it's basically just a who's who on every single one of the notable voice actors yeah I mean, yeah you got tara strong billy west phil lamar gray griffin jim cummings d bradley baker all of them just showed up here set a line and then went home uh well notably uh colonel santino was voiced by john dimaggio Yes. Uh, who sticks out because on my letterbox right now, because I watched all the Transformers movies this year for Ace, he's actually one of my most watched uh, actors of the year. So he's getting another one. He's racking them up. <laughs> all these voice roles. He just sneaks in where you least expect him. In fact, I think he's got a voice in the the newer Turtles movies we did, uh, the, the Bay produced ones. I think he's one of the voices in that. That sounds right. I think he is. But I've um, already wiped those from my memory, so... <laughs> he just, well, he does a lot of voice roles, obviously. Uh, and... He was Uncle Arthur in the Super Mario Brothers movie, too. Ah, so he has another one. That's why he's, he's ranked up so high. Yep. Yep, yep, that's, that sounds right. Um, but he does tons of voices, obviously. He's all mm-hmm. over the place. Uh, obviously, he's most famous for being Bender in Futurama. Yes. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, start cast, surprisingly. <laughs> Which I do want to point out the one trivia bit here, which is um, this was a co-production between, I think it was Nickelodeon? Yeah, Nickelodeon, and, I think, had been doing the TV shows at this point. Right, and the Weinstein Company, which obviously has its own bag of worms, but uh, apparently they had a fully filmed thing with just normal voice actors, just your not big names, but just mm. voice actors. And then when the Weinstein Company hopped in, they brought along all these big names to do these other voices so they just refilmed like sarah michelle geller and chris evans into these roles yeah i mean you say refilm she spent a day in a, a sound booth <laughs> oh yeah so it's a lot easier than actually reshooting stuff but yeah no, I, I see what you're saying uh yeah okay well that's interesting i yeah i mean i think one of the first things i'll say about this is that the turtles voices do sound exactly what i expect them to sound like mm-hmm. uh, but both in terms of the voice acting and what they sound like literally but also the writing of the dialogue. There's, you know, Raph sounds like Raph. Leo sounds yeah. like Leo. Uh, that's definitely one of the first things that stuck out watching, especially since the last couple we did were the, you know, the Bay produced 2014 and 2016 movies. Yep. And much like I said in those reviews, uh, Raph, Leo, Mikey all sound like they should. Donatello shunted off to the side as <laughs> he should be, apparently. <laughs> I mean, Leo and Raph are always going to be the main two. It's just the way mm-hmm. it is. They're the ones who drive the plot. They have the conflict. Yeah. Uh, they're the more interesting characters. So, yeah. Um, I, guess, I mean, I just guess I'll ask the question. We'll get into it. So yes. we've, we've, we've covered the, the basis. Uh, we've, we've kind of ignored the plot for the most part just because I feel like I'll just get into it in spoilers so I can explain the whole thing in one go because it's yep. there's a lot. Um, so, David, uh, mm. uh, well, first of all, actually, had you seen this before? I had, like I said, I saw it in theaters um, once, and the only thing that I remembered from this movie was that as I left the theater, I turned my neck, and my neck, like, cracked louder than it ever had or ever has since. So I guess I was just sitting really still watching this movie the whole time, but that should tell you something that I retained nothing from this movie after I left it, outside of that one thing. Okay, well, you've revisited it. You've got a, a better understanding and appreciation of the Turtles because you've watched all the yes. other movies now. So, mm-hmm. with all that said, what did you think of TMNT? So, I do think, having watched the other Turtles movies, it does benefit because, as you said, this is a loosely following sort of movie. 
and they definitely play it in the sense of some time has passed and we are supposed to already be familiar with these characters so do you know what it felt like to me it felt like when there's a new comic run by a new writer and yeah. it's like the last one's in continuity that happened but things feel a little different that that's yeah. what it felt like to me it's like look 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 some time has passed some things have happened we will we'll, we'll explain them if we need to but for the most part just assume everything is yeah. as you think it should be which was a problem for me considering i didn't think anything of them i didn't know where things were supposed to be but in terms of watching this one through, this was the fastest movie I think we have ever done for this show. <laughs> it, it was it was over in a blink of an eye. I, I was so surprised by the time we got to the end that it was already there. Um, most of the plots, I'd say there are two or three of them. Two of them, eh, fine, I guess. Not really all that exciting for me. The only one that I kind of got pumped on was the Leo versus Raph plot it's i the, think that it, it, it's the best part of the movie like, it I, is I, the I, best part of the movie and in such i obviously this is once that's sort of wrapped up and taken care of eh, i don't really care much about the final act of the movie but it was entertaining for the parts where that was the focus so yeah i think there yeah. was a hope when they made this that they didn't want to just retread old ground so they made what i think is new villains i mean i could be wrong maybe some comics did introduce these characters but Mm -hmm. um it feels like they wanted to do something separate um and you know do do some stuff with the characters but keep the actual villain plot as just kind of a fresh like standalone thing and then hopefully it's successful enough to get sequels and then there they'll dive into more sort of well-known turtles villains and things like that which honestly is a sound enough plan but yeah I, I remember at the time not feeling like i really cared that much about the the main villain plot of this uh, yeah. But enjoying the turtles themselves, their voices, and the Leo Raph conflict, um, I think that stuff's all pretty good. Uh, I think the you know the way they use the city, New York, feels like a character in and of itself in mm. this movie, which is nice. Uh, I will say what's interesting about watching it now, all this time later, and I, I saw it when it came out, and I saw it maybe once or twice in the next year or two, you know, like close to when it came out. So it's been over a decade probably since I've watched this. Is that you know, at the time, it looked like any sort of, like, modern CG movie. Now watching it, like, it does feel dated. Like, it looks really simplistic versus, like, a yeah. modern CGI. It, it actually made me think of, like, cutscenes from, like, an Xbox 360 game. It kind of felt like that. You, uh, you were giving it farther credit than I was. It felt closer to, like, PS2 for me. Um, well, I think that's a bit harsh, because I, I, I think that's you overestimating what a PS2 cutscene looked like. That's fair. I I think the pr biggest problem with for me is that the opening, not the very opening scene, but the first scene in the movie where we see the villains and stuff set mm -hmm. back like 3,000 years ago or whatever, that was awful. That looked horrible. Mm -hmm. And it just really set it off on a bad tone for me the whole way through. Yeah, it just, it looks a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's not as detailed. It's not, the mm -hmm. animation's a bit stiffer than... Uh, like I, I like the design of the turtles. It's the classic looking turtles, which oh, yeah. is is all I you know. Splinter looks great. I think. Mm -hmm. I think April and Casey look good. Like all the character designs uh, for all the main characters is fine. I think the villains look a bit generic, and that that almost yeah. also feels like a weird comic book you know villain problem. Is that anytime you create a new villain, they just kind of look a bit shit. But mm. uh, so it is interesting watching it through that lens of like this animation now is dated a bit, uh, and it's relatively speaking in the early days of cg animation in movies now i know that it'd been a decade since toy story but other than pixar like i, I would still argue that 2007 is still early -ish in the the overall scope of that at this point yeah i think that they had managed to lock down things like you know the physics and basic materials and stuff like that but there was still a long way to go to realism which is why i think when they made the humans more stylized they made them look very cartoony Mm -hmm. It was a benefit. It did wonders because if they tried to make them look realistic, I feel like it would just look awful all throughout. But there is something missing in terms of, I guess I would just say the tone of it, like the general feel of it. Like looking it feels, at these, pr it, it feels flat. I think was the way yeah. I'd phrase it. Every, everything just feels like it could use more detail and more texture. It could use mm -hmm. more uh, fidelity. I guess is the word that you just used to encompass all of it, but. Um, yeah. I, I suppose the other thing I would say about the, the look of the film is that it is a little bit uh, desaturated, uh, which I guess was just the style at the time, was to desaturate yeah. things a bit. Uh, but it feels, it's a really weird choice in Turtles to me, because I'm like, 
they're green and their identifiers are these colored like you know headbands and yeah at times it was tough to tell between uh purple and blue especially it was it was kind of yeah. it was tough and i think when you look at the trailers for the new one mutant mayhem and it's so bright it's so vivid i'm like okay i don't know if i'm going to like love the new movie necessarily but just from the trailers i know the color palette is on point and it is yeah. definitely a, a big step up from from what this looks like well yeah that's what i was going to get into was the idea of you compare the way this looks to the way that we've just seen in the trailers for the new one, and it is night and day, just completely separate styles. Whereas this one's going for sort of, like you were saying, the desaturated, dull, not realism, but just, like you said, of the time. Like the, um, what was the game that always caused that? Gears of War. Gears of War, yeah. The, the browns and the greys, that, that's all yeah. it was. It, it feels like that sort of thing where it's like, look, we know they're cartoony, we know that, but, you know, kids want to see that sort of stuff they want to see realistic stuff and it's once you only get to the modern day with the new film coming out people are like oh wait turns out people want to be entertained who would have thought <laughs> yeah so so the, the look does have a, a bit of a kind of flat dated quality to it mm. um that, that's not to say that it looks bad though i, I wouldn't say like i, I think yeah. it's kind of if it's very much of its time um and i think i actually think that the fight scenes are decently well done i don't think there was a single fight scene where i was sitting there like eh, that's whatever who cares i think that they did a good job of as you said new york as a character they did a good job of working in the geography of the town and like how they're fighting through the scenery a lot of rooftops a lot of fire escapes a lot of Mm -hmm. things like that i'd also say that um like you say the fight scene is obviously the big one between leo and raf and the rain is definitely mm-hmm. where I think the movie looked its best. And just something as simple as the close-ups in their eyes as the rain's hitting their, their faces. And, you yep. know, that's like, okay, I'm hyped. The, the, the turtles nerd in me is, like, ju- doing, you know, screaming and jumping around. There's, every once in a while, there are, like, YouTube channels that do a modern redrawing of, like, a classic scene or something like that mm. in a film. I'd love to see a real high-tech special effects company just take that one scene in the rain and redo it with modern graphics because that mm. would look fantastic absolutely it's, it's it's one of those things where it's just it's such a i feel like if you're a long time turtles fan watching this movie and not even just now i mean in 2007 like mm-hmm. i'd grown up watching turtles the cartoon the movies is that having leo and raf finally sort of have a conflict and sort of like building up to yeah. a big thing felt like a big deal it was like okay everything else is fine and whatever but this actually feels like I'm being rewarded for being a fan like throughout the years and I'm finally getting this kind of conflict that's been kind of always been underlying and kind of there, but now we're finally kind of doing it. Which is to say that I will say the movie does have that key goal in mind and it does do it. Does it do it the best possible way it could do it? Probably not, no. I mean, there's, there's definitely... Yeah. It could flesh it out. It could be longer than 80 minutes and do more <laughs> with it. But the the fight scene's great um the the conflict makes sense you know mm. so uh, yeah uh super into that um but it's de- it's definitely not a movie that you come out glowing i think it's one of those weird things where you come out of and go you know what for people who care about turtles that's worth seeing and has some things in it that they're going to really appreciate being there but it's not this like franchise like breakout movie that's going to capture a new generation of fans which is probably what the intention was and what what the studios were hoping was going to happen oh yeah there's there's a trivia bit in here of they already planned out a whole trilogy oh i'm sure yeah adapting the comic line which honestly looking at the plans here um their plans were the next one was going to be mikey feels like he's you know not as central necessary to the group so he joins the foot clan which apparently was a straight up storyline in the comics. Oh, okay. And then third one would have been what was then the first appearance of the Technodrome and Krang. So oh, that's a... I, I, I would have been interested. Yeah, I, I remember hoping there was going to be sequels uh, when this came out. Not that this was perfect, but I liked it enough. And I was like, yeah, I'm down for more of these. I like Turtles been back in my life again. And then yeah. obviously it just never happened. And then eventually we got the uh, the 2014 movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow we sure did win on that one oh uh, yeah great stuff um so you know it's one of these things where they keep trying to re reboot it and we, we got a sequel to that 2014 movie let's mm-hmm. hope that a mutant mayhem is good but also that it's successful enough if it's good to uh you know necessitate or not necessitate you know i mean like yeah get, and, get a sequel you know get 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 some more uh yeah. that'd be good and hopefully the success of spider-verse which is clearly heavily inspired by from a oh, yeah. style sort of perspective um 
not as the exact same style, but just it's just kind of like Spider Verse just showed that hey, you can do these different types of animation, you can do mm-hmm. these different types of thing, and that's okay. And here we are with Turtles. So, uh, yeah. I hope it I hope it lands. But anyway, so yeah, Turtles two thousand seven. Um, I I think it's a it's, it's one of these things where I'm like, it's better than Turtles three. And yeah, I, I think objectively it's probably better than two. Although I think I have more fun with two, just because it's more wacky and I've got nostalgia for it. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely agree with the three. I think it's the issue of uh, the problem that I had where the second and third one were so much more aimed towards kids, mm. like super young kids. This one feels like a step back in the right direction. Obviously, it does still have a kid slant to it a much more younger audience but like there are certain points of this movie that some of them are spoilers that like seem kind of more mature that no, I'm, sure, I'm not yeah. gonna say i'm not gonna say that kids can't handle it but it's something that adults can at least appreciate so it's a step back in the right direction yeah yeah it's, it's definitely sort of finding the balance there a little bit better um and mm-hmm. i i think it's like because I, I think Patrick Stewart's character in this looks like he's got the big chin like uh, Incredibles. And it, it was mm. making me think, okay, oh, clearly that's where this art style is kind of inspired by. Yeah. Not for the turtles, because the turtles have a very defined style, but for the human characters, it's like, okay, you're, you're taking things from the Pixars and the, the DreamWorks mm. and whatever else has been around at this time period. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. I, honestly, I, I don't know if I've got too much more to add. Uh, the music is not bad. I, I feel like at times it was actually trying to channel what the original movie's score sometimes felt like without using any of the actual themes, maybe because they didn't have the rights to use them or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wish... So apparently, like you were saying, Nickelodeon had the animated show going on at this time, mm. and I know the animated show had its own theme song, so... I'm unfamiliar with what it was, but I'm wondering if maybe that theme song managed to sneak its way in without us noticing. Oh, maybe, yeah. I, I wouldn't know. I have never, yeah. I've, I've never watched a Turtles TV show other than the original animated series, so I yeah, have no fair. idea if, if that stuff's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so... I, actually, bad. funny little, funny little mm-hmm. side tangent. Um, with the writer strike and all that going on, I, I don't know if you saw this news, but apparently I think it's Nickelodeon is bringing back the classic 80s show in the syndication. I, I, you know, I did see this. Yep. They acquired the rights to it to air it, and they're going to start airing it in the next month, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, the original 80s show is uh, going to be on Nickelodeon. Turtles are back in vogue. If, if you have, you know, like cable channels anymore. I, I don't really. But... Oh, no, no one does. <laughs> no one's uh, going to see this. Maybe they've got their VOD service. I don't know. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I know. Uh, so I, I guess we'll say spoiler warning so we can get into things because I don't think sure. I've got anything left to, to dive into without it. So spoilers yeah. for TMNT will dive in. Um, Lawrence Fishburne eases as gently <laughs> into the movie by explaining who the turtles are and they defeated the Shredder. And mm. uh, But the, the next threat that's coming started 3,000 years ago. So... Just that first scene when they're describing the turtles, Mm -hmm. that had to have been added after the fact when, like, after a test screening and they were like, oh, wait, turns out people may not have watched the turtles back in 1990 and still remember it now. So we need to explain who the hell are these guys? Well, there's yeah, kids under 10 that probably need a yeah. refresher. But then again, they may have been watching the Nickelodeon show. I don't know. Anyway. True. But I'm just saying this opening scene was just saying, like, they, they even laid out the part of, like, four brothers, turtles, all of them named after Renaissance painters. I'm like, wow, all right, you're just going through the whole thing now, aren't you? I mean, that, to be fair, though, like, I, I can see the choice to put that in even without like having to add it after the fact that that feels to me like you're just easing people back into it and like i agree if it wasn't for the fact that it was that scene and then it follows up with the 1000 years ago the more natural sense in my mind is the thousand years ago cut to modern day no i mean that that's probably the most plausible thing out of this you've said to me is that Mm -hmm. because it takes place before that opening but then again I, i could also see an argument being it's not so much that they felt the need to explain it more so, it's more that they wanted to show the kids the turtles before we did this long exposition flashback. Oh, yeah. Because they're going to be going, where's my turtles? Why are we watching these weird... Uh... Every single Turtles movie has a <laughs> section before you see the turtles. 
we got to teach these kids what it was. <laughs> yeah, this is weird. This, this is the thing. The backstory in this, uh, and I'll be honest, I wish they. Well, I'm not really into this plot anyway. But Same. if they're if they're going to have it, I wish they'd done it without this big exposition flashback at the start because it just kind mm. of feels like okay, we got all these armies fighting over this artifact thing, which opens a portal to a dimension that will give after everlasting life to the person who opened it, and. <laughs> I'm just like, the stars are aligned, blah, 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 blah. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Uh, yeah. The key thing that happens, though, is that Patrick Stewart is made immortal, and mm-hmm. all of his generals that were following him all turn to stone, and uh, that sets up what he's trying to do in present day. So, And 13 monsters get out of the Quite portal. Right. Quite right. There's 13 monsters from this other dimension roaming the earth. So that's yeah. the key things that happen in this flashback. But then, mm-hmm. of course, we're introduced uh, uh, to present day. We get... This story of what's going on with Leo, where uh, there's so there's like thieves and extortionists like robbing from this village in Central America, and Leo, much like the Phantom, uh, mm-hmm. is the ghost of the of the jungle and jumps out at them and like you know k- kicks the shit out of all of them and sends the, all the stuff they stole back to the village. Um, yep. And there's actually a really neat transition here, I thought, where this little kid's looking up at the tree and he sees Leo kind of with like a, a cloak on. And it cuts to like him pointing there from the sort of same moment, but now he's talking to someone who's saying that that's where I saw him. And then you see April's here, and it's like, oh, that was a nice little transition. Okay, April's tracking down where Leo is, um, and her talking to Leo when she goes to find him uh, hmm. is what sets gets us a little exposition of like, okay, where's everyone else right now? How how is the whole gang keeping up? Yep. Which I guess leads us in nicely just to talk about where they are. So Leo is in Central America. He's been sent away for a year to train, although he's overdue to come home um, mm. because Splinter wanted him to become a better leader. So, so go away and be do your, like, you know, your, your backpacking through the jungle and being a hero to, like, grow as a leader, grow as a, a warrior. Do, and you, as a... do your peace corps here and then come <laughs> back to actual society. Effectively, yeah. Uh, and we find out that Donatello is earning money by being tech support, which makes sense. It works for him. You know, I was... I guess I would have been like 15, 16 when I watched this movie the first time around. Mm -hmm. Now, being an adult and having worked in customer service, (laughs) I get it, man. Like, this scene hit hard. Oh, I'm sure it did. (laughs) Yeah, he's like, if you try to turn it off and on again. Yeah. uh, uh, Yeah, no, so he's doing that. Michelangelo is putting on a big fake turtle head to pretend that his whole body's a suit so he can do like birthday parties for kids. So mm-hmm. he's a Kawabunga Carl is his day job. I love how he went the Ghostbusters 2 route. That's, that's exactly what he did. That's yep. incredible. That's exactly what he did. Uh, and we see him like coming home in his van. Uh, so they actually kind of set up the van, but it's like for him, him for his work. So he's, he's got mm-hmm. Kawabunga Carl written all over the side of it and stuff. Uh, but he, we see him coming home and skateboarding in the sewers, as you do. Uh, mm. so, uh, so some classic turtle stuff there. And of course, Raph is the big thing. Raphael is decided to be a vigilante on his own. He's wearing like a sort of suit of armor to like conceal who he is. Uh, he's developed, he's not really picked it, but the, he's been referred to as the night, uh, watcher. Yes. Yes. Not watchman. Cause Leo says that later in the, they t- all correct him. Yeah. Uh, so we see him with this metal suit on and he's taking out crooks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's basically being Batman. Like, that's effectively what he's doing. <laughs> okay. So I, if we're going to bring this up now, I want to bring it up now just because... So there's the villain plot. Yes. And then there's the Turtles plot. Mm-hmm. And they do eventually overlap, obviously. But the Turtles plot is just, oh, you know... how. We've been away for so long. We haven't been doing this for a while. How are we supposed to come back together? And the one point of contention that keeps on coming up in the Turtles plot is that everyone is talking about the Night Watcher and they're saying like, ah, who does this guy think he is? Like, ah, this is going out there acting like a vigilante. At no point do they make the differentiation between this guy and what the Turtles did. And it really sours the entirety of that plot where they were just like, why is it so? Do- why do you have such a hard on about going after the Night Watcher when you guys did the exact same thing? Ah, uh, methods, I guess. I, well, and obviously, Raph's not uh, down on him. Raph's like, oh, yeah. it sounds like he's doing some good job. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's a cool guy. Yeah. Maybe we should invite him over sometime. He's probably quite handsome. 
Yeah. Uh, so heard he has a big dick. <laughs> the Tarles Hoftex? I, for breeding purposes, I have to assume so. I'm just because yeah, they're not mammals, so I'm just not sure what they've got there. Yeah. Specifically, cloacas. Well, because would you describe? I mean, describe a fish as having a dick? Would you? Yeah. No, but I think, I think they are the ones that have cloacas. Okay. I mean, whales have dicks, but whales are mammals. Uh, right. They yeah. Remind everyone. Um, yes. So, uh, yes. Which... Hi, kids. Welcome to <laughs> Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I've lost track of my thoughts just because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how no, big, was, how big a blue watcher. whale's dick is. Uh, it was the so... night watcher not being explored. <laughs> yes. As why is it different? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just like a. It, 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 I don't know. It's it's like Green Arrow coming into the city and judging Batman. Like you know, it's like there's like a hypocrisy to it. But it's you yeah, know, he's just a little bit harsher. He's 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 gonna he's like hunting down regular criminals a bit. Whereas the turtles were always like, oh no, we're hunting down. You know, we're being ninjas. We're being honorable. We stay in the shadows. We don't let ourselves be known. Whereas this Night Watcher's kind of developing like a reputation and a persona. Like he's in the news. Like people are talking mm. about him. Which you know, as as we know, Splinter is not thrilled about when they pop up in the news. And I agree, I understand that, but it also, from everything we see, at one point there's a newspaper that shows like a blurry photo of the Night Watcher, so clearly mm. he's not posing for pictures, he doesn't course, want yeah. to be found, but... Well, I think the point of it is that once Leo's back and he starts criticizing this Night Watcher guy, mm. I actually think it's intentionally a bit of subtext where he's criticizing him, and he doesn't realize it, but he's criticizing the Night Watcher for the same reasons that he would criticize Raph for, and it's, you know, oh, they're, yeah. they're going for that. Um, I... I get why Leo does it. Leo makes sense to me. It's that everyone else is also kind of like... No, no, no. To be fair, Mikey's kind of into him. Mikey's excited to see him on the news. Is he? Yeah, Mikey gets excited. Because the, oh, yeah. the first time he's on the news, Mikey like sits up and he's like, oh. Although I, I interpreted that scene more as... Because they immediately follow it up with them reminiscing over the glory days. I, I more so took that as a, man, I really wish I was out there doing that. <laughs> Not so much that he's cool, just that he wants to be the one doing it. Yeah, well, that's fair, but that just furthers the point of that he's not against what this guy's doing True. as much. True. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, so it sets up these characters. Mikey gets home and, like, you know, Raph's sleeping all day, so he's barely talking to the others because he's gone out and been a vigilante all night. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's all... It's all a bit like that. Uh, there's, a, there's a funny little bit where Splinter is like, I'm going to watch my stories. And it's, uh, so it's after Leo's come home and they're just on the rooftops. They're meant to be training. And Splinter said, you're not allowed to actually fight anyone properly until you're a team again, until you're unified as one, right? All very wise words from Splinter. Yes. And of course they end up seeing a monster and they see the Foot Clan, you know, uh, kidnapping the monster. So they're, they kind of, they end up getting involved. Big fight happens. Mm-hmm. It's not really their fault, but uh, Splinter goes to watch his stories, and I think he references Gilmore Girls as he's sitting down. Yeah, he's like, Cody's definitely going to break up with that guy. Yeah. And then the TV says, we interrupt Gilmore Girls to bring you this breaking news. <laughs> uh, and says, oh, this thing happened right out of a science fiction film. And then Splinter turns around and yells at the turtles because they've, A, they've went against his word, but also they've ended up kind of on the news again. Their yeah. antics are showing up. So that that's a big part of this movie is that mm-hmm. they're not allowed to go and be the Ninja Turtles until they're they're unified as a team, uh, yep. and that doesn't happen until quite late on, really. Uh, of mm-hmm. course. Uh, so, so, so then the other plot we got going on, and the whole reason that April was down in Central America to begin with is she has changed jobs into an import export business. She goes and finds like artifacts and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. she's kind of kind of like a half indiana jones style yeah uh but maybe maybe more administrative than that (laughs) it's it's indiana jones but instead of museum it is actually just private owners yes so uh she's hired by the guy named winters to find this statue called the fourth general and we also meet casey at this point who is just her ride more or less and we see them find the statue she brings it back delivers it to winters who has this whole huge tower built like he's super ultra wealthy I, i'm not gonna lie I, I saw the big w in the front of the building and just thought wayne tower like that's, oh, all, yeah. that's all i think about if I see no a big doubt. W. <laughs> uh so they walk in they deliver this statue and winters in case you didn't manage to pick up the pieces already he explains it 
more or less, where he's like, ah, yes, there were, this is the last statue in my collection. They're closer to my family than you could possibly imagine. Wink. And April's like, all right, that'll be forty two fifty. Have a nice day. Given the trip, I'm, I'm hoping that was four thousand two hundred and fifty at least. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if, if not forty two grand and five hundred. Mm -hmm. But then <laughs> we ha we have a uh, winter's putting some sort of okay. This is part that kind of got me, and maybe you can have a better explanation. Than I do. I These that. guys were turned into stone. They are, for all intents and purposes, dead. That, this is these four generals we're talking about here. Right. His four generals that were turned to stone in the past. Um, he takes some tech and puts it on their body, and they all wake up. They're not not stone. They're not back to flesh, but they're all moving and awake. What the hell kind of tech is this? Like this seems. It. Th I think this is a big problem I have with this entire plot is that it keeps on bouncing so quickly between science and magic and not explaining the difference yeah this feels like magic it doesn't feel like they say anything more than that I, yeah yeah i i don't have an answer for you like I, the, right. the, these details for this plot are, are all over the place um yeah. it's just no they're they're these stone henchmen now that are going to help the foot clan who are effectively just hired guns because they don't have a purpose anymore without shredder so yeah. They're just because hired. Turtles Two is still in continuity. Exactly. So they're just like hired to help bring in these monsters because he's trying to get the thirteen monsters because that'll if it, you know, we don't. I mean, we find out later what he wants to do with them. And the turtles, of course, when they learn more about what's going on, they think, oh, this is going to lead to like the Earth being invaded by monsters and it'll destroy everything. We have to stop them. Mm -hmm. It actually turns out he's actually a better character than that. And what he's trying to do is send these thirteen monsters home because that's where they belong, so it's good for the Earth, because they're not here causing havoc, and they also get to be home, and it'll reverse the immortality, and basically, you know, he'll fix his mistake. You know, he regrets what he did all those years ago. He's not actually a villain, even though he's yeah. presented as the villain for a lot of the movie. I mean, there is a whole section where we go through his works of art, and we see that he has just consistently been, like, a ruler throughout all of history. He has <laughs> always positioned himself in a position of power. But... They do at this point in the movie, well, towards the end, he basically explains like, yeah, no, being alive for 3,000 years sucks. Like, immortality is a curse. I want it to end. But his generals, as they are slowly realizing this, are like, okay, but we just came back to life and we don't want to die. So Yeah, they betray kind him. Of, yeah, they, they yeah. betray him because they want to live forever. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, 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 that's kind of that all summed up, basically, yeah. in one film swoop. Um, Pretty much. So, Raph goes to Casey for help to look into whatever's going on. Um, mm -hmm. After they witness some of this stuff, he goes to Casey, uh, and Casey uh, hangs out with him, and they end up witnessing more of the foot stealing a monster. And we get like a comical bit here where they, they go undetected until uh, Casey's quite clumsy in this movie, and he knocks off a rock. Yeah. Uh, and it lands in the alleyway next to them, and they all look up and they're like, Witnesses! So... There's actually a genuinely really funny bit here where Raph drops a, drops a smoke bomb and he runs away and Casey just stands there like, Raph, where'd you go? And you can see Raph running. So it's like it, it's like he's trying to Batman out the scene, but you can see him running in the background. Oh, yeah. And then eventually Casey's like, oh, shit, wait for me. And then he runs as well. Uh, I appreciate the fact that there are like four or five smoke bombs used in this movie. And each and every time we follow the person leaving. Like, we don't, no one ever just Batmans out of the yes. scene where they're just gone. We're constantly following the person after they throw down the smoke bomb. So it almost seems ineffective each time. Yeah. And then sometimes you also, like at one point, they're thrown into the mouth, mouth of a monster for a little mm -hmm. comical, you know, ex inner explosion. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So Raph gets hit with a dart and he's knocked unconscious. He's, he's going to be fine, but Casey goes to the Turtles for help mm -hmm. and they all come over to see what's going on at April's apartment. And they're like, okay, so this is going on. And April realizes that these things that they're talking about, because Casey recognizes the stone dudes as what the one that he delivered earlier with April. And he's like, mm -hmm. hey, that's one of those guys' things. And then she's like, wait a minute, this was all a myth. And then explains all of the exposition to the turtles again. Uh, which oh, can, I, can I just say how much <laughs> I hate the phrase? And I, I can't even know where I've heard this, but I just hate the phrase of like, but, but that was all a myth. 
it was just legends. It can't be true. I I don't know what it is about that phrase, but I'm just like, yeah, no, you you got four talking, walking turtles behind <laughs> you. But yeah, there's no way this could possibly be true. Well, I hate it as well, just because it's so overused. But I, mm. I actually do think it's a problem because it is so much more magic-y. Whereas the, tur- the turtles, as yeah. silly as it may be, are science fiction because they are mutants from a, you know, from a whatever. In the continuity of this movie, April has time traveled. Is Turtles 3 canon? Because technically this movie only confirms one and two. In the trophy room at the end, the time scepter is in there. Is it? Damn it. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's actually a tease in there for something that's not in the movies. Uh, the rat catcher mm. mask is on that shelf. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so that, that's an interesting little Easter egg they put in there. Um, mm. But yeah, so it's like, okay, we have to do something about this then. But Leo's like, no, no. Until, until Splinter gives us the go-ahead, we ain't doing shit. And Raph's like, well, I quit then. I'm going off to do something proper. Uh, and he, he goes out. And Leo goes to Splinter, and Splinter's like, look, this team yet is not complete. You're, you're anxious to lead, but you know what you must do. Go and find Raphael. And while this is going on, Raph's suited up in his armor. He's going to be a vigilante. And we get mm. a whole like comedy monster scene where he's fighting this little monster in a diner um and it's an all right scene i'm I'm not ragging on it it's all right um but basically this draws the attention of leonardo so we get this great shot of leonardo up on a rooftop uh very dark knight returns looking this this shot every once in a while they will have the turtles in shadow and they'll have the whites of the eyes lit up but no Mm. like pupils or anything like that always looks great every time they do it and of course he chases raf not knowing that it's raf uh, and they end up, Raph doesn't say anything, and there's actually a great moment here where they're on a <laughs> rooftop, it starts raining, and Leonardo starts trying to like talk to us, like, hey, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but it's not the right way to go about it. And we go to like a sort of inside the helmet, like POV shot of Raph, and he's like, is he trying to lecture me? Is, is that what's happening right now? <laughs> oh my god, he's lecturing. God <laughs> damn. It's such a good moment. Uh, so Raph br- brings out his, you know, spike balls or whatever he's got he's on his chains and mm. uh starts a fight so we get this fight scene and it's and it's it's fun this first part of it but obviously when it gets really good is when leo uppercuts him knocks off the helmet and leo's kind of winning the fight while the helmet's on where it's mm. like it's getting raf's more frustrated and he gets the helmet knocked off and then he sees that it's raf and raf stands up and leo says a couple things and raf basically you know because because leo says like you you know you're short-tempered um you're you rushed out you don't listen to orders and more importantly i'm better Mm. and that's the moment where raf just takes his sigh out flips him around in his hands he's like i gotta disagree with you on that and it's like oh shit we're doing it we're going to have them fighting on a rooftop in the rain Yes. I especially appreciate this scene because, like, you were saying how it ends with that moment in terms of how, like, the discussion goes. But the them talking to each other, just basically hashing this out, you can feel that building. You can feel that moment where, like, more and more it's just coming to the surface where Leo's like, you're the Night Watcher? Dude, what is wrong with you? And Raph just comes back with, like, you left. You were gone. You abandoned mm-hmm. us. What is, like, what? You're the one who's caused all these problems here. And it just goes back and forth and back and forth of, like, Raph saying, like, why do you get to be the leader? Why are you so important? And then it leads into that line of, like, because I'm better than you. And you feel that everyone's tempers are just flaring up right now. Like, probably most of what's being said isn't actually really meant deep down. Mm. But it's that sort of thing where whenever I see them butt heads in the previous three movies before this, I wanted it to get up to this moment. I always wanted there to be this sort of moment. So when we finally get this scene, I'm I'm like, yes, thank you. This is the only thing I've wanted for like four movies now. If it feels like a big deal. If it, like you say, yeah. it crescendos throughout the scene, and then by the time it's like, okay, it's one thing when they're fighting when Leo doesn't know it's Raph, but mm-hmm. once he does know it's Raph and they're squaring up and they're pulling their weapons out, it's like, oh shit, they're actually going to do this. And if you're mm-hmm. a Turtles fan and you've sort of had this kind of tease to an extent, basically in every form of turtles yeah. this feels like a huge deal to finally see it this is the main event of the movie the stuff that comes after this is fine you know it wraps yeah. up and but this is the main event that, that this is what we're here for and mm. 
I think the outcome of this is, is perfect. You know, it's like this fight where they're both trying to prove themselves. Like, Raph's determined to prove that he's better than Leo. Leo's determined to prove that he is the rightful leader. And Raph wins. Raph yeah. gets Leo down. He, he, you know, and there's a, there's a couple of good shots here right at the start where it does sort of stay, like, a, in one shot for a while as they're fighting. And obviously it's animated, so they can do whatever they want. But oh, they yeah. choose not to cut around too much early on, which I really appreciate. And... You know, when Raph wins and he's got him down and he's holding his side at him, and there's this like moment which makes him run away and kind of like shame where he re- like almost in the moment like he was ready to go for the kill shot. And I don't think mm. he was ever really going to do it, obviously, but it's nah. that sort of thing where he's in the heat of the moment, he's, he's about to win and he's maybe going to go too far and he sort of realizes it and runs away. And of course, you know, Leo gets up and like the bad guys have all shown up and they, they take in Leo. Um, mm. And they say, hey, we'll pretend he's the 13th monster. And, yeah. you know, then then the thing won't work and we'll stay immortal. Screw the old man. You know, that's the idea. And mm-hmm. Raph hears Leo scream, which is great from a, a narrative purpose because now Raph's going to feel responsible. Leo got kidnapped because they had mm-hmm. this fight and because he left them there. So, yeah. you know, that gives Raph something to be guilty over, which is good. It adds a little extra bit. I'm not sure if you said this, of the katanas being broken yeah like yeah, he, yeah he had no way to even defend himself because his weapons were taken even if he wasn't being drugged as well yeah yeah absolutely uh, he you know that's how he, when he wins the fight he wins by yeah cu- you know cutting the katanas off mm-hmm. um which which makes for really simple visuals because when raf goes back to the base and he's like you know splinter i've done something awful um and he's like what have you done and he, he just like puts the two broken katana handles the mm-hmm. hilts in front of him and it's like oh shit like you feel the weight of this um i i do appreciate the fact that he lays down the katana handles and then explains like oh these monster guys have them because if i was splinter in that situation knowing how hot-headed ref can get and i just saw <laughs> these two broken swords i'd be like did you just kill leonardo <laughs> um but you know he you know, he gives him this speech where he's like you know just because you're sometimes the worst student doesn't mean you're like the worst yeah. son, right? I never think like that. Your passion's an asset. Your passion to like, do good is admirable, mm-hmm. you know, almost to a fault. But God damn it, it's like people can respect it. But um, that that's not a problem. So you know, that's that's you need Leo and he needs you. So let's let's go do this. Yep. Uh, so obviously Donnie and Mikey get involved. Um, there's not really much to say about them other than just they have the odd joke effectively throughout the movie yeah no that's what i'm saying like michelangelo he get he has a lot more of the one-liners he throws i'm pretty sure the entire like ending of the monster plot is just him consistently making a joke about like mm. oh god it's in my mouth or something like that donatello does nothing just throughout the whole movie there's not even like any technology that like he should be looking at that he does look at he's just there well not to be fair he does look at the giant beam going out of the sky and says that's an interdimensional portal I could have done that. <laughs> that says tech know how, so it does if, it. If I ever see a giant tower with some swirling clouds above it and a beam coming out of it, I'm going to say that's an interdimensional portal because I've seen about 700 movies in the past five years that have that mm. interdimensional portal. Well, to portal. be fair, this was in the earlier days of this happening. That is so true. That this, is, true. Is, this is before that was done to absolute death. But yes, yeah. I am sick of the beam of light into the sky. Uh, it wasn't blue i'll give them credit oh, it was that's a sm- it's a small mercy but yeah sure yeah. um yeah i think yeah donata i feel like the trajectory the turtles characterization is that mm-hmm. leo and raf are always going to be the ones with the most character the most plot and like drive everything and then eventually mm-hmm. you do something with mikey because he's sympathetic because he's the innocent goofy one so when you yeah. do a more serious story with him it kind of lands really hard and I think it's notable, and a spoiler for the long-running IDW comic series here, uh, mm-hmm. for anyone who's caring, but, and I'm sure they did stuff with Donnie before then, but there's a plot line in that comic where it, uh, I think he's the only remaining turtle. Like, the other three all die, and he's, like, the yeah. last turtle standing. And it's like, okay, like, I can see, like, you pick him to be that turtle because, okay, he's the one who got the least whilst everyone was there, so you develop mm-hmm. him be being like, okay, he has to embody all of them now like after yeah you know, so i know there's, there's definitely things you could do but yeah in this movie donnie especially has nothing really uh, yeah, going on for sure there is one thing that we kind of skipped over here which i do think is in a major problem with the pacing of the movie mm-hmm. um so they encounter that first monster 
and they have the whole building fight or whatnot and they're super excited like oh yeah turtles are back we did it hooray um and then we see the foot clan going out with the generals and finding all the other monsters yeah which i think seems like it is maybe a week probably should be a bit longer but it feels like a week and then we immediately follow up that scene that little montage scene of them getting all the monsters with them saying hey remember how we beat up that monster yesterday which means that the entire <laughs> plot of this movie is like three days tops it's probably just a case of uh that line of dialogue if they just changed that to last week it would have fixed probably the whole thing but it but, just yeah. it just it threw me for a loop because oh. i was like dear lord this is so and it went along with that idea of this movie is so fast like it before you even know it you're just into the third act oh we never mentioned how leo gets back into the city there's a plane coming in and as the wheels of the plane come mm. down as it's going over the water leo's like on the wheels of the plane and then glides off them and yep. his fancy glider i don't know i thought that was that was no neat. yeah it was a solid intro. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have any issues with it. Yeah. I just thought I'd, I'd mention it before we I forget to bring it up at all. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Casey suits up. Uh, April gives him a fan. Because Case, Casey's mask gets smashed earlier on, and they make a, he mm. makes a reference. That's the second mask this week. So April gives him, like, a metal Casey Jones mask, and he's like, oh, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to marry you, April. Uh, now available <laughs> in Walmarts near you. <laughs> uh, and he's got his golf bag full of all of his weapons. April's got, like, a ninja suit. Uh, which is definitely something that the modern comics, I think, have also done is like they've made her more like capable in fights oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I'm sure, I, I, and I think that's just a conscious effort to not have the one female character just be like helpless. Uh, you know, it's just it's a bad look. I get it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you you adapt anything from the '80s or earlier, you're gonna have to deal with that. Yeah. So she's fighting. Splinter's fighting. Um, Splinter's having a good time. Even. They're all fighting the Foot Clan specifically here. They're the Foot Clan are the ones that are defending the tower. The as yeah, the... they're they're all out in front of the building. So we get this big scene of uh, obviously everyone but Leo who's in this cage inside the mm -hmm. building. Uh, they're all going through all the Foot Clan, and then it's a really interesting twist to things when it becomes clear what the old man's actual intentions are, and that the Stone Generals have betrayed him. Mm. And like, we need this 13th monster, and there's like a time limit because this portal is eventually going to close and it'll be too late. Yep. Um, because the foot of, of a, are, pay, are being paid to work for, for Winters, they're like, no, we're honorable. We took this job, so we're going to keep working for him, and that mm. means we're going to help the turtles. We're going to help. So it's not even that much, but there's just this one little snippet of them being chased by this stegosaurus shaped monster and yeah. like casey and april are bickering in the front of the van and uh her and like just one like you know a voiceless foot soldier uh are just like sitting in the back and she's like you'd think they'd be more concerned with the monster and like you know they're just bickering like a couple while this monster's chasing them through the streets it's a funny little like cutaway yeah. but that's all it I is. enjoyed it's just, it it's just a cutaway gag um, i do think um so in the first three movies, we never actually got this female character, but she did appear in the Michael Bay ones. She did, yeah. She, she's from the Karai. comics, yeah. Yeah, she's been around in the comics for a while, but it is it is interesting that if we were to watch this through in order, you're rather saying, than having this one come afterwards... You're saying this should be the bald guy from uh, Turtles 1 and 2. <laughs> I'm not saying it should be. I think that'd be great. <laughs> but no, I think it's, it's more interesting that this is more... She got more characterization in this than I feel like she did in either of the Michael Bay movies, just because she is forced into that leadership position. Yeah, absolutely. Look, that's the thing. She doesn't really have that much, but because she has that one scene where she makes a choice and says, no, we're honorable, we're going to do this. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's more than she ever got in either of those two movies. She's just yeah. a henchman in those movies. For sure. Um, the show, do you know what they should have done? Sam Rockwell back to voice uh, his character from the first movie. That would be great. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I used to work for the Foot Clan, but now I'm, a, I'm an investor. <laughs> he, he should have been like the diner cook instead ah, of Kevin yeah, Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. He's like, yep, this is what happens, kids. You run with the foot, you end up owning a diner in Jersey. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, there's a whole thing there where the the cook like thinks Raph's robbing him because he's big mm -hmm. and scary. And he's like, come on, why 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 is it so hard for people to accept that I'm being a hero, I'm being a good guy? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that still fits into that Batman thing. Like, just like civilians being like, oh, he's scary Batman. Like, oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, obviously there's four stone generals, which is perfect because there's four turtles, so mm -hmm. they, they fight for a bit. Um, Splinter's kicking monsters, because monsters try to come back out the portal, 
Yeah, uh, right back yeah. out. But there's, there's like new monsters trying to come out the portal, and Splinter's mm-hmm. just kicking them back in, and he's like, "I've still got it." Um, sad, sad note on this: the uh, voice actor for Splinter, Mako, um, mm-hmm. he actually died before the movie came out. Uh, yeah, he died in 2006, so he must have just recorded his voice stuff uh, early on. And yeah, it you know. says that um, they San Diego Comic Con the pe- when they had a panel for this movie, they announced him as voicing Splinter at the panel, and he died like three days later. Oh man, yeah. Oh well, you know, uh, it's very sad. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, he he does a good job as Splinter. I thought. He, oh he, yeah, no, he he does. He's always done a great job because he um he's better known as Uncle Iroh in the Last Airbender mm. uh, animated series and Aku in Samurai Jack, and he always has that very like proud Japanese voice, and yeah. I, it just works perfectly for Splinter. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, so he's he's got a couple of one-liners there, um, and yeah. So basically, you know, the the van comes in uh, because they set up at the start of the movie that all the electric shutters, like the big security gates, all come down if you knock over any of the valuable artifacts. Casey mm-hmm. intentionally does that. Uh, I think he did that earlier on, actually, but I'll, I'll mention it yeah. now. Uh, but anyway, they get the last monster in the portal and the day is saved and patrick stewart thanks them before he disintegrates happily he wants to die he's ready to go uh which which you say that as if it happens like oh the portal is closed and he immediately disintegrates it but takes like, a minute yeah yeah but but that's again it just keeps coming back to why like i would be okay if like he crumbled into dust fine cool that's totally fine if he even just was like, no, I feel mortal now, and now I can die. Like, but he still ages normally. Still would have been fine with that. But instead, he does like a floating up into the air, and then turns into magical pixie dust. And it just keeps coming back to that straddling the line between magic and science, where they have all these scientific explanations of like, oh, the stars aligning causes a rift, and then this portal comes down, and all these special things need to be taken care of. But then it's just straight magic whenever they actually end up doing anything. Yeah, that's why I don't like this plot that much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't even going to bother mentioning much about that particularly, but yeah, like it just ties into why it feels a bit off. For, for, for our Turtles, because the you know, Turtles villains are always sci-fi-esque or, mm-hmm. or mad scientist-esque. Like the, this feels just more like it's out of a different franchise. I mean, I'm just going to throw out the potential here. Wouldn't it have, if they did have the potential to run this full trilogy, wouldn't it have been so much cooler if this was a link to like Krang's dimension? And like the, that was just one little tease that well, you maybe, got. Maybe it was. Maybe if Krang, if they'd done the next two movies, maybe Krang would have said, yeah, the portal opened like two years ago and that, yeah. will, that made me aware of your realm and that's why I'm coming. Like they could, they probably could have tied it in like that. Uh, yeah. I guess but, I just wanted more so of like, one of the monsters that comes out, or maybe even one that gets stuck on our side, is like a brain-looking creature like the, Krang. There is a tease here, though. Uh, K- uh, Karai does say, um, next time we meet, we'll maybe be on opposite sides with a familiar mm. face, and then the turtles all look at each other and go, does she mean, nah, can't be him. <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, so, yeah, they're all happy as can be, and the movie ends with the turtles running over the rooftops, and Raph has a little, uh, you know, you know, we fight together as brothers, uh, we are, you know, blah, 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 and it ends with, you know, you know, damn, I love being a turtle, which is actually kind of a callback to Turtles 2, because they say... Yeah. I mean, I mean, they've said it in comics as well. It's not, it's not just exclusive to that movie. I feel like movie. they've said it in all the movies, haven't they? I feel like I remember hearing it in all the movies. I don't remember them saying it in one or three, but I mean, maybe I definitely did. remember them saying it, yeah. I think I just remember it in two because it's right at the end after they've survived Super Shredder. Oh, yeah. When he's like, I yeah. love being a turtle. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, that's the movie. Like, it, obviously, it's pretty brisk. Uh, it's definitely got its kids' movie elements, even though there are parts of it that are a little bit more mature uh, with mm-hmm. the, the, the Raph and Leo conflict. Uh, and that is definitely the best part of the movie. And it's why I think Turtles fans will get something out of this, even if the main villain plot is just kind of this whatever story about this magic MacGuffin and this immortal dude. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, that I, stuff's just I, whatever. I, the only purpose that the villains really serve in this is making it so that Raph feels bad when Leo gets taken. Like, because honestly, 
the plot that matters is the Raph versus Leo plot. Well, no, it's, it's, it's not just that, though. It's also because there has to be something for them to work together to beat well, at the yeah. end, right? There has to be another villain for that reason, so... Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so they serve a purpose, but it's almost like we don't want to do anything important with the villains because we'll save that for the sequels. Which is so. why I think that having such a complicated backstory for the villains actually is weird. was a disservice. <laughs> like, it would have been one thing if they just said, like, oh, yeah, one of them was immortal and the other ones got turned to stone. And they don't even explain it any more than that. They just say, like, yep, that's all it is. But then they add in the extra stuff. Like, turns out that uh, Winters is the name of the old guy. His actual name from back then was Yautl, and the stars are specifically part of this constellation of, like, Kaizen or something like that. Like, everything gets a name, <laughs> and they're all worthless in it's terms super, of, yeah, like, what's it, it care about? It's super detailed, but it's all just fluff. It's all just yeah. fluff to make it sound more complex than it than it is, which, you know, is, is whatever. I, yeah, but, I mean, the turtles themselves are fun to watch, and the, mm -hmm. the Raph and Leo stuff is good, and... I think it still holds up well enough because of that. It's still an easy watch. Um, yeah. You know, it does make me sad that this didn't get its trilogy. And I, I wouldn't want sequels now, but certainly at the time, like if they'd done a couple, you know, over the next few years after this, oh, yeah. that'd have been cool. But I, hey. would, I would have even been okay with it. I mean, maybe they did. I can't say for certain that they didn't, but I would have been more okay with it if it was like Nickelodeon direct to channel. Movies. oh sure yeah like if they just did like hour-long specials that were just exploring more of this sort of universe i would have been cool with that yeah i think at the time this level of cg was probably on a unattainable at, in tv mm -hmm. now it probably is like this is probably quite simplistic by today's standards but you know i know that i know that back then nickelodeon had the show jimmy neutron which obviously is a lot less in terms of power yeah than with the cgi but they did have the ability to do regular cgi shows so I mean, it may have looked worse. It may have been more stilted, but they could have at least carried on with the plot. Yeah, I'm curious, actually, since we've basically wrapped up hmm. um, the movie, I'm just going to look up how many shows there have been. Of uh, Turtles? Uh, I know there was the 2003 was the Nickelodeon one that was going on, and then there was the 1980s one, and there is a current Nickelodeon show. I don't know if it's still going, but there was like a, a well, CGI uh, version. Well, I'm looking up. So, okay. so I'm just saying, I know three. Rather than speculating, know. here's what we've got. We've got the original show, obviously mm -hmm. from 87 to 96. Yep. Uh, we've got a live action series from 97 oh, to 98. Oh, God, I remember that. Yeah, I vaguely oh, remember no. that. Uh, <laughs> no one wants to remember it, though. Uh, no. There's the animated series that was on during this time, which is 2003 to 2009. Three. Yeah, uh, and if I just click on that, I just see what that. Yeah, I recognize the logo for this. This has got like the sharp edges and the. the, the yeah, logo. it looked it looked darker, and I think it was actually more of what we were talking about, like a plot based show, mm. where each episode kind of fed into the next one. Uh, and then you've got another series from in 2012 to 2017. Uh, was that the CGI one? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's computer, computer animated television series. Mm. Okay. And then there's a fourth one from 2018 to 2020, which is called Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know that one. That one's too fresh for me. Yeah. Uh, this one, judging from this image, has Raph with the full bandana, so that seems to be from this. Oh, uh, it's basing it off the Bay movies, because that would have been right at that time. When uh, it been. They have that sort of design to them. I will say that from this poster on Wikipedia, I do not like the animation style of that, because it looks yeah. really... I don't know. It's looking a little bit Riley Rosmo for my taste. And I realize that most people listening to this probably don't know who that is. He's a comic book artist that I don't like. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, I was just curious to see how many shows there had been up until this point. And there's not currently one running, but uh, yeah. I'm I'm sure if this movie does well enough when it comes out, I'm mm. sure it's going to just immediately probably. get a Nickelodeon show running. Probably. Uh, but uh, this whole Mutant Mayhem is good. And mm -hmm. it lives up to whatever... <laughs> expectations we have for it but before we get to that we do have to rate tmnt yes. from 2007 so what are you rating the movie david oh well that's super easy and i haven't been agonizing over it this whole time um i mean it's 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 so fast that's the issue i'm really having here is that like it feels like it's an hour long and i know it's longer than that but it feels like it is just sort of a made for tv special 
And that's not to say that the quality is any worse, but it just flew by so quickly. And with the primary plot, if you consider the villains to be the primary plot, not being that interesting, I don't feel like it can really get that high of a score. There are aspects to it I like. Obviously, the Leo versus Raph fight is just everything I've wanted for a collective 10 hours of Turtles now. But is that enough to really save the movie? As hit or miss, I would say that this one probably comes out to just a flat six for me. I think that it's it's a well enough made turtles movie if your focus is on the turtles but it's done so quickly and it's half the plot doesn't even matter to me that i can't rightfully give it any more than that yeah i think that's about fair i'll probably agree with the six uh which is a bit down from whatever i read it when i first saw it mm. uh I will, so, so to compare it to, so for the bonus episode on Patreon, back when we did the rest of the Turtles movies, we did yes. uh, Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the animated movie. Mm-hmm. I will say that movie is better overall. Surprisingly so, I was not expecting that to be good, and we were both pleasantly oh, surprised great. by it. Um, yeah. I think that the Raph and Leo scene in this is better than any one scene in that movie. The, the, the peak is higher as a mm-hmm. Turtles fan, but that movie's much better constructed, uh, you know, it has a, a better plot. Uh, having all the different characters clash off each against each other is part of the fun. Uh, it's more of a complete package. Uh, yeah. Whereas this, you know, kind of flunders and feels a bit generic with its kind of crappy villain plot. Uh, but there are stuff, you know, I, I think for a Turtles fan, it's worth watching. I think for a Turtles fan, it, you'll get something out of it because I, I certainly do. But mm-hmm. it's definitely with some caveats and like, okay, but you're not going to care about this main thing that's going. If it, it feels like if this is part of a TV show, it's like one of the episodes that's got a nothing plot, right? There's yeah. some good character stuff in it, but it's the, the plot itself is a nothing thing. And then the next episode might be the important episode, but unfortunately we never got the next movie, so... Yeah, like uh, it, it's one of those ones to take the episode metaphor. Like there's episodes that drive the plot and there's episodes that are character development. This is a character development. Yes. So, hey. Uh, and as far as making the cut goes... uh. I, if you want me to throw out my opinion, Go I on. think this, I think this is cutting it close. I think this is straight, almost by definition cutting it close where there's certain aspects to it that are good. That might be enough for some people, but for other people, it's just not enough. I think this is straight down the middle in that sort of way. No, I agree with cutting it close. I wasn't sure if you were going to argue uh, down a bit from that, but yeah, no, if that's what you're feeling, I agree with it. Uh, yep. Cutting it close feels right to me. So that is TMNT, and next week we will have the new release. In fact, because of when we put our episodes out on Saturdays, uh, the new movie should actually be out uh, just yep. today or yesterday. So, uh, But next week, our review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and we're hoping for the best. Yep. Hopefully it's good, uh, and we'll see how it is. Uh, of course, you can support all of the content and get extra episodes every month at patreon.com slash Uh All the tiers get access to a bonus episode um right now uh, the new one is the illusionist uh which <laughs> to tie in with turtles to tie obviously. in more with some nolan stuff that's going on uh and then also the five dollar tiers and up you get access to extra reels which is our show where we do some of the worst movies ever made some yeah. sometimes they're hopefully entertaining uh but i can tell you the one that's coming up later this month is not one of those <laughs> so look forward to that uh, but you know, th- there's like 10 bonus episodes now. There's like seven extra reels, uh, plus all the other movie podcasts we have, they all have their own bonuses every month. So there's a whole host of bonus content to get over there. And more importantly, it'll help keep all the content coming. So, uh, go on, uh, do all that. Uh, but that is the show that has been our thoughts on TMNT. So let us know what you think of the movie in the comments, like, and subscribe, all the usual things. That is the show. Thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching movies and I love being a turtle.